All right, so we've had a bit of a problem with my poor old bandsaw, and um, out of all the tools that I've got in my arsenal, I reckon this bandsaw is the most useful, the most used. So, you know, what's happened is the um, blades got jammed when I was cutting up my strongbacks. I've got quite a few more of these to make. Um, to go underneath my concrete slab on top of the piers that I've poured to, uh, to jack the slab up and, and square it up. So this thing has been running pretty constantly, making, cutting all that gear up for me. So I thought, well, we'll see what's going to be most cost effective. New motor or getting a whole new bandsaw. So uh, as it worked out, I bought another motor off eBay, which is a totally different configuration than what was on there, but I'm going to make that work. But the first thing I want to look at, first of all, was whether the sort of worm and worm wheel were in reasonable condition to go ahead with or we'll spend the money putting a new motor on it. So I've cleaned all these up. There's the old golden slick that came out of the oil, which is obviously some wear that's coming off that um, worm wheel, but all in all, that's in really good nick. I'm really happy with that. So it made me think, well, it's worthwhile refurbishing this. This one's a, a, a BS5, which you can't buy anymore. The, the frame size is slightly bigger and deeper than the um, BS4As that... Uh, that are currently on the market so it just gives you that little bit more capacity but it's got the hammering over the years and I'm going to give this a bit of a birthday and tidy the whole show up but let's have a little bit of a look at this motor so this is the one that came off it that's uh, that's burnt out you can it's quite blackened in there and the plastic fan inside it's melted out and this is the one that I've uh, I'm replacing it with so this is the one I've got off my eBay. This is a um, 0.5 horse as compared to the 0.25 horse, which is what this one here is. Um, slight difference in the center heights, which isn't going to really hurt me um, with the uh, belt adjustment. But the big difference is the shaft diameters. This is 16mm, this is 14mm. So I'm going to uh, so, yeah, quite sloppy. I'm going to make up a um, a stub shaft to go on here to extend it. I'm going to bore this out by another couple of millimeters to give me a bit of wool thickness on that stub shaft so the stub shaft will go on. I will cut a keyway that will drop in and engage that. Uh, with the, the straight section with that keyway continuing through and it'll be an M5 screw that I'll use in the end of that to, to push that back so we'll extend that shaft considerably so that's the next job. I've gone through the whole show's been wide up, it's a little bit of a different configuration the way this is wide up from the um, um, on off switch which also does the uh, turn off when the when the bandsaw blade frame drops down so that's that's all wired in and and working so I'll just uh, give it a flick on, just don't touch anything because it's all live <coughs> This is a bit of plastic at the back that was vibrating like crazy on it, but yeah, so that's all working now. And uh, I've got to cut another another hole in here for another grommet to get the second cable in. And uh, I'll also rotate this around 90 degrees um, so that it's poking out this side as well. The other thing I like about this too, it's got a, a uh, an overload switch, so if anything silly does happen again, it'll trip out. It'll just uh, trip that little fuse out in there, so... It's going to make life a little bit safer for me, so... Anyway, we'll set up in the lathe and uh, we'll do a rough little sketch on what we're going to do here and, uh, and get that little stub shaft knocked up and get that in and try and get this bandsaw up and going again so I can get back into uh, doing the steel cutting. Right, oh, well, before we start machining up a little sketch, I'll just give you a quick look at the workshop at the moment and we've got... Looks like a cheese grater at the moment. I have got holes over every part of my workshop floor at the moment. It's in my office, all on the wall, you can't see those. But uh, I've got 27 all together, and that's all because my shed has sunk considerably at the back due to um, water issues. So 
I've uh, had a chip come over and core drill and I've gone down with my little 16 inch auger which I've opened up a little bit more to uh, go down nearly two meters and then at the bottom with I designed up and knocked up this bell mouthing tool that uh, the blades open up as I rotate it when I lift it out of the uh, the hole the blades retract pull the clay back in so that opens up the base to you know close on half a meter so uh, gives it a considerable bearing area so my workshops very much junked up at the moment with stuff everywhere so just have to be careful working around it but um, that's what the whole show is about trying to get this uh, the shed back and back and straight again so that's the plan anyway we've got our little sketch here that I've done this is this is rough as rough as rough so overall it's going to be 55 millimeters long the 14 mil ball is going to go down 28 millimeters. I'm going to do a cannibal back in the end for an M5 socket to cap screw. And the OD is going to be 18 mil. And then we'll put a keyway into that once that's complete. So just something to work with. So that'll go onto the, uh, onto the new motor. There's an adapter to be able to fit the existing pulley set on. And then we can mount the motor up and, and get the whole show rewired and, and get it back into action again. So uh, I'll get set up. And, uh, and we'll come back. All right, so we're sitting away. We'll get to set it up and, uh, and get the center drilled. Um, this bit of stock I've got here is probably a chrome molly. It's, it's very hard. It's going to be a 41, 40 on an 26 or something similar. It's got a keyway in it that we'll, we will machine out when we get down to about 18 millimeters in diameter. And a bit of a circlip in there at some stage, but uh, all that will machine out. And then uh, we'll do our counter bore up inside try and do it all in the one setup so we keep everything reasonably concentric and we'll part it off, flip it over, face it and then counter bore and drill for the uh, for the M5 socket header cap screw that's going to lock it onto the shaft and then we'll head over to the mill and um, I'll try and put a keyway in it so um, we may even machine this here yeah, just have a bit of a think aloud at the moment um, I might machine this a little bit longer so I'd get a little bit more out of the tail so out of the chuck here just so we've got something to grip onto Nah, we'll leave it as it is. I'll do it on the vice. Don't mind me, I'm just talking to myself. Alright, let's get the centre drill in. bought from uh, Banggood, one of the, those Chinese supermarkets and uh, I haven't used it yet so we'll see how it goes. I'll just adjust my tool around a little bit. Let's lock it up at that. Doesn't machine like a chrome molly, so I think that's 
Maybe a 1020, maybe a 1040 carbon steel. In regards to that, we'll keep going. I'll just uh, do a quick AD check on that. So, yeah, 21.3, so about 3 mil off, one and a half off the radius. So we're 0.02 over half. Well, no, one part two, so very little taper, so yeah, we'll, we'll say half a mil. Right, right. <laughs> Quite cleaned up, but for what we're doing, that's what this is going to be used for. It's not going to hurt me. Let's have a look at the center of No four, so I'll just give that a linish with some uh, emery paper. Just bring that down to size. I'll just go and get a little pulley and I'll try it again to see how that looks. Alright, we've got this out the size 0.01 of a mil up on the 14 mil, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to have to do a little bit of lynching inside it, we'll see how it goes. I changed my boring bar over, the one I had in there was. Um, yeah, it's giving a really poor finish. I don't know what it was. Tried a few things, changed the tip over. I went down the next size bar, and um, yeah, it's done a great job. So beautiful shiny finish inside the ball without having to touch it. So that's uh, that's worked out quite well. All right, I'll uh, I'll park that off. I'll try it in the motor and just see how it looks. Um, Get that faced off the side, we'll do the counter bore and drill through for that, uh, that M5 that we're going to use to screw on the end of the motor shaft to lock it in, then we'll set it up in the mill and uh, we'll do our keyway. So we'll do our keyway over the same shadow as this key. It's going to cut most of that out, so we're going to see the little end bit there. So that's going to, that's going to work out quite well. Alright. Okay, so we're back. Yeah, my battery uh, battery went flat on the, on the camera, so... You get to see the rest of this being finished off, but basically it's been turned, bored, and the keyway's cut. So, now it's a, oh, it's a very, very light tap fit into place, and that's into place. We drop our key in, and we have the other key for our pulley, which is this one here, which once again is a size for size fit. Now we do have an issue and that is the pulley, the original pulley that came off compared to the original motor, that's a 5mm key and that's a 6mm key. So I've obviously bored that out but you can see there's quite a difference there. So we've got a couple of options here. We can broach it out Unfortunately, for a 5mm broaching key, I don't have a um, 
a sleeve for it. 16 mil. If I had known this was the case when it was 16 millimeters, which matched that, I would have um, broached in a new keyway before I bought it out to the 18. So I've got a couple of options. We can just leave it the way it is. The problem I've got with leaving the way it is is that this key is badly tapered on the top. So when my key goes in, it jams, which is okay when uh, it's not actually on the shaft, but trying to get that off the shaft to do any more maintenance work down the track is going to be extremely difficult. So, um, other option is to uh, make up a new broaching sleeve for the 5mm, or as I've done in the past sometimes, you can, you can shim around them and put them into the hole and cut them, but um, unless you get the shim wrapped all the way around, which is going to be one mil shim, which is going to be pretty stiff, that's going to be fairly awkward. I have tried in the past with tri shims around it, but they move and the keyway gets up the creek. So I think what we'll do with this one here, for what it's worth, it's going to be a quick exercise just to make up a new 18 millimeter sleeve for a five mil broaching key. So we'll get that right. We can get that on. Electrically we're sort of sorted out. I'm going to leave this box where it is and just bore into the sides here to fit two glands. One will be for the mains power coming in and one gland will be for the power going in or out and in from the limit switch. So we'll get that sorted out. So I'll just bore out new ones there and I'll, I'll look at... Uh, just plug in that one off. Could have rotated this around, unscrewed, you can rotate them 180 degrees um, and come in the bottom, but I think we'll just uh, try and fit up new glands into here. We'll see how that looks anyway. All right, well, first of all, we'll make up this little, this little broaching sleeve and get that on the go.